Welcome to EduPlanet 21's 10 Minute Tuesdays, weekly conversations with experts in education. My name is Janelle McGann and I'm a customer success manager in EduPlanet 21. Today I'm excited to be speaking with Amy Lee, an instructional leader from SJI International School in Singapore. Amy, welcome to the conversation. Hi Janelle, lovely to be here. So can you begin by providing us with a little background on SJI International School and especially your mission? Absolutely. Um, we're a reasonably uh, young school uh, in Singapore. We've been around for about 12 years at this point. And I suppose key to uh, the curriculum aspect is the rapid growth of the school from initially just over 100 students to a role which is now uh, over 1,100. Um, and when you grow in that, sort of at that sort of pace it can provide particular challenges um, and in terms of curriculum development um, and that's been something we've really taken a journey with um, over the last few years. Uh, we are in our nature Ella Salian School. Um, what that means is we have a very clear and strong mission and vision. It's one of the greatest strengths of the school uh, in terms of our mission which is enabling students within Ella Salian community to learn how to learn and to learn how to live, empowering them to become people of integrity and people for others. With, with that strength of mission, uh, which has a huge degree um, of support from all of our parent community, our student community, our staff community, um, we really group together to try and achieve that mission in tangible ways um, at the same time. Critically, one of those key features being where we are in the nature of our community. As a LaSalle community also means uh, developing global citizenship, or as we call it, internationalism as well. Great, so can you talk a little bit about that journey that you've taken as a school for curriculum? Really, it started back in about uh, 2015, uh, 20, going into 2016. We started to look in more detail at what was going on. We had tremendous results. Um, we had incredibly committed teachers at the same time. And when we walked around the school and we looked at what was going on in lessons, Children were learning in an active way, in an engaged way, and there were very positive outcomes. But questions which emerged for me um, centered around things like, how do we know what we're doing in terms of specifically whole school goals? And how do we know that we've got a common approach to how we think about what makes a quality curriculum? And how do we know that what we're all doing, we're on the same page about the importance of the learning how to learn over perhaps the learning just for content? And whilst a lot of good practice was happening, it was the uh, way that all of that wasn't necessarily being pulled together that led to the development um, of a three-year process that we designed to take our curriculum from where it was and to draw it together, critically centered around achieving our mission. Um, and so, of course, as, as most things do, um, we started with a lot of uh, professional development um, for our teachers. We started with a core group um, and they went off to train in curriculum design. Um, and, and these were people who were essentially looking to develop their skills in this area. And they were in positions of leadership within the various faculty structures as well. When we go and we learn about curriculum design, about what makes great curriculum design, I think it's one of those things that uh, becomes intrinsically self-fulfilling. Um, some things are so self-evidently good that they really speak to themselves. Um, the next phase of people who trained came back with a similarly positive attitude. And when I formally actually launched the curriculum redesign process, the way that we were going to use Understanding by Design to think about that was almost sold for me. And it was sold for me by the people who'd already become advocates for it um, by themselves. Along the way, um, having worked in similar roles before, I knew that what we were gonna need to do was move the curriculum online. But I needed to be really careful of change overload in the community. Uh, although there are some people who are passionate about curriculum writing, I think they're probably outnumbered by people who see it as slightly administrative chore um, at the same time. And I was really keen to avoid making too many changes all of the time. So having gone through a growth process in terms of our capacity for curriculum design, we started actually our mapping and our uh, documentation process just in paper form. Um, at the same time. We developed a common template which was aligned to the mission and really was bespoke to us and allowed us to really look at how we were achieving our mission. 
And then about a year into the process, having worked behind the scenes with um, our online provider, Edge of Planet 21, um, to customize the platform, we did a soft rollout for six months where people were invited to explore the program and to do training. And then about six months after that, we asked for all of the planning to then be transferred um, into an online form. Uh, and to reduce kind of barriers, we provided a lot of administrative support in actually doing physical transfers of all of our curriculum onto an online platform so that teachers didn't have to do that themselves, reducing that kind of, why didn't you do this at the start? So you were looking for a platform that was going to support that good curriculum design um, process and you were already using understanding by design as that process? Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I, I was familiar with a number of, of different um, curriculum software providers. Um, and then I worked with our technology team here um, to try and find what was out there and to listen to the pitches from various companies and to try and explore the various features that they had. But um, I think at that point in the journey, I was extremely clear about some non-negotiables um, about the platform that I wanted. I think the driving force, as I keep on coming back to behind our school, is our mission. And if a platform wasn't going to be able to be customized such that the key features of our mission, things like our internationalism standards, things like eventually what we use as our learning to learn goals, um, all of those things needed to be features, key features within a platform that would look and link towards our mission at the same time. So customizability was incredibly important to me. Um, and secondly, there are many benefits to having the curriculum online, but one of those, from my perspective, uh, looking after the curriculum is the ability to draw out maps of individual standards or goals that are achieved over time through multiple discipline areas. Um, and so I was looking for that analytical power as well to really be able to understand how we were gonna do and achieve what we wanted to achieve. Um, as a school. And so when we did all of that analysis, when we um, looked at all of the different providers, the one that seemed to provide us critically with that customization and support for analysis um, was EduPlanet21. And um, that was, that's where we went. Um, and that's where the development happened behind the scenes before we rolled out to start. So in, in terms of the um, analytics, Amy, can you talk a little bit more about your plans for that? and how you might use the analysis tool on the platform? There are obviously loads of <laughs> different uses for it. Um, I'm hopeful um, that some of the export features, rather than the analysis features, first of all, some of the export features will actually enable me to replace some of the documentation we have at the moment in terms of how we share our curriculum with our staff community and also with our parent community. So there's a workload time saver there, which I am really keen to exploit as soon as we reach the end of our three year process. Um, specifically, we've done a lot of work trying to unpack what internationalism means uh, for our school. Um, back in 2016, we went through an entire sort of um, literature review process with a, with a group of staff in the school to come up with an articulation um, of the key internationalism goals um, and what they really meant. But in the sense that they were rather aspirational goals at the same time, although it clarifies internationalism to some extent, those goals still need unpacking uh, into the knowledge, skills and understanding. Um, one of the key features that has been useful in that stage is my ability to do a stage one analysis frequency report, which effectively allows me to take one of my internationalism goals, look at where it's being addressed in all of the discipline areas, in all of the grade levels, and then to draw that alongside with the knowledge, skills and understanding to see what people are actually doing. The benefit of being able to do that is to be able to bring groups of staff together, working groups of staff together, who can work on specific collaborative, um, uh, in collaborative groups, which will enable them to be able to show how that particular goal, goal uh, looks and progresses from grade seven up to grade 12 for us. It's really important to have that continuity and progression through the curriculum and unless I get those people together to come up with a common understanding of what they're going to teach what context they're going to use and more importantly possibly what they're going to be doing in terms of the standards and levels and expectation um, of our students in a highly complex area um, the stage one frequency report is absolutely invaluable to me um, at that point that's one of the key things we'll be working on um, 
over the next year or so. Obviously, there are lots of other opportunities through uh, being able to extract various features from the platform to get people together talking meaningfully about the work that they're doing in a highly focused way. Um, and that's something which it really would have been impossible to do without the analysis tool. Well, we're almost out of time. So thank you very much for um, talking to us this morning and for sharing your journey with us. Thanks, Janelle, uh, and thanks for the opportunity.